Hello viewers, I want to welcome you to the telecasts of Porter's House Christian Mission Ibadan, Nigeria. It promises to be a refreshing time in the presence of God as we bring you exciting episodes of what said the scriptures. Serve me. 
let him follow me. First, I think you will take note that any man can serve him. But I don't think any man can serve him anyhow. Any man can serve him. But serving him is not by preaching. It didn't say, if any man serves me, me, let him preach. It didn't say, if any man serves me, let him sing in the choir. It didn't say, if any man serves me, let him pay his tithe regularly. Please pay your tithe regularly. But that's not a service as far as Jesus is concerned. What I am doing now is not even a service. This is not how to serve God. You may think I am serving God, but Jesus said, if any man serves me, let him follow me. And it's interesting. He said, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. Two things is coming here. I see that a man who follows must of necessity be behind. But Jesus said, where I am, whoever is following me will be where I am. In other words, a man who follows the Lord must be on the same spot with him. But the man who is following me from behind could not claim to be on the same spot with me. So I'd like you to take note of two things. The word follow and the word or the phrase to be where I am, which I want to call fellowship. So the kind of following that Jesus initiated or indicated or suggested or introduced to the rich young ruler in Mark chapter 10 is the one that involves following and fellowshipping at the same time. To follow and if you don't mind to fellow. If you don't mind my English that there is a following and there is a fellowship. If these two are not there, it, there cannot be a true following of Jesus. Then the question is, how can I follow a man from behind and at the same time be on the spot with him? So, that will take me back to that story in the book of Mark and is the issue of the cross. Now, when he said, take up the cross and follow me, in Matthew, for instance, chapter 11, I would like to bring you to verse 29 the Bible says take my yoke upon you and learn of me so if I ask you what does it mean to follow in the literal point of view if I say somebody is following another person if I say somebody is following, following after another I am simply saying that this person who is following is copying the life, is walking in the full step of the other person. When you follow a man, you are actually becoming um, not just a fan, not just an enthusiast, you are actually copying that person. Like birds of the same feathers that flock together. But in this context, in Matthew 
He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Which means, no learning without yoke. Or I should put it this way, no yoke, no learning. Now, learning Christ is different from learning about Christ. The man who taught me geography when I was in secondary school, I am not sure he had seen Mount Everest in his life. And yet he described Mount Everest so vividly and you would think he, was, he had lived there before. And so it is possible for a geography teacher to teach about Mount Everest when he has never seen Mount Everest. A man could talk about Jesus without knowing Jesus. You can learn about Jesus without the yoke, but you can never learn Christ without the yoke. So, coming back to that Mark chapter 10, we are just all talking about the cross. So I ask, so what then is the cross? If the cross is what could bring a following, and this following is a following that involves fellowship. Fellowship for me implies fellows in the same ship. People who are together as fellows, maintaining the same ground, believing the same thing, upholding the same thing, pursuing the same thing. Those are fellows in the Bible. Now, Jesus said, take up the cross. I realize if you have ever seen a yoke, in the part of the world that I live, I live in Nigeria, I live in the southwestern part of Nigeria, but because of my work, I travel around the country. And the northern part of Nigeria, they are predominantly, you know, a lot of farmers there. You have large expanse of land. And they use animals, cows, to plow their farmland. For the first time, I saw yoke real life when I traveled to the north. I saw a wood, a horizontal wood, that lies across the necks of two like animals. And this wood is tied on both ends to each of the cow. This wood makes the journeys of this cow won. And he used this a lot in Israel, either to tie two cows together to pull a cart, or sometimes to plow a field, but in this context to train another animal. So what, what, what is Christ saying? Now, apart from the horizontal wood, that connects the two animals together, there is also a vertical one that slants downwards to which the plow is attached. So, if you stand on an elevated position and you look at the yoke, what you will see is the cross. So, when Jesus told that man, Take up the cross and follow me. It simply meant take up the yoke and follow or and learn of me. Eternal life is in learning Christ and I'll be dealing with it another time. But take this before we pray today that the yoke, the cross, which my arithmetic teacher called plus when I was being taught arithmetic in the primary in the elementary school I realized that it is the teaching aid for Christ for any man who is interested in possessing eternal life following Jesus and when you see sometimes you have a cow that is experienced in plowing, and then there's another cow, it's a complete greenhorn, it doesn't know how to plow. And now, when this inexperienced cow 
is to be trained how to plow. What they use is the yoke. They don't simply tie the inexperienced cow to the experienced cow. The experienced cow, who is now the teacher cow, knows how to plow. Once he gets to the farm, he knows what to do. But the student cow does not know anything. The student cow, once he gets to the field, wants to grace. But the teacher cow, once he gets to the field, wants to plow. And because there is something tying the student cow to the, to the teacher cow, the student cow will not be able to express itself fully anymore. And so by the power of the yoke, once the teacher cow bends down to start to plow, the student cow has no choice than to bend down. Now, they will be at par. They stand together. But when you look at them, you will think that the two of them are experienced the same way. You will think that the two of them are skillful in plowing. One is a teacher, the other one is a student. You will think that they take the step together at the same time. One initiate the step, the other one follow. But you will never have noticed because they are par. Yet, there, there is a following. The teacher cow takes the first step. And because of the yoke, the yoke pulls the second cow, the student cow, and it takes that step. There is a leadership that brings followership. And at the same time, there is a fellowship. Now, that yoke, when it stays on the neck of the student cow for a long time, he becomes the exact replica of the teacher cow. He does not only learn to plow like his teacher, he learns to eat like his teacher and at the time his teacher eats. He does virtually everything like his teacher. When that cow graduates, and he plows a field. You will think it's the teacher cow that plowed that field. Now, when they are, when that instruction is going, when that training is going on, followership becomes very easy because of the yoke, because of the cross, because of the cross. The yoke adds the life of the teacher cow to the student cow. The yoke makes the student cow one with the teacher cow. Whatever the teacher does, the student will also do. Whatever the teacher is, the student is. Now, if you enter into that place and you see the two of them plowing, you will think that the two of them are experienced. You say, wow, these two cows are skillful. But this student car will say to himself, I only rejoice in the yoke that connects me with my master. I don't know how to plow, but I follow a man who knows how to plow, and I look as one who knows how to plow. That is what Christ introduced to that man. I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to be righteous. I don't know how to be humble. I don't know how to be meek. But the yoke that connects me with Christ compels me to behave like Christ. I do not only stand behind him physically. I stand beside him by the power of the yoke. It is only the yoke that can make a cow to follow and at the same time to follow. That's the cross. That is the cross I am talking about now. That is the instrument by which Christ teaches men his life. And if you must possess eternal life, you must take this yoke. I hear Jesus saying, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Precious brother, precious sister, you have learned from so many people. 
We have learned many things in life. Some wise men came to Jerusalem when Jesus was born because they saw a star. When they made it to Jerusalem and they came to the palace and they met Herod, they told Herod that a king was born and it was the king of Jews. Herod said, not here. When Herod saw their insistence, when Herod noticed that he was speaking convincingly, he was speaking with candor, he knew these people were learned. Looking at them, they have read big, 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 massive books. Herod just asked the scribe, bring the Bible, check where will this king be born. And as they searched through the scriptures, they found it written in the book of Micah that the king will be born in a village called Bethlehem, not in a city called Jerusalem. Now, those wise men have read many books, but they have not read the Bible. They stood there as two fools. You have learned so many things. You learn technology, you learn computer, you learn this, you learn that. In fact, you have magazines and journals and reports that you are reading to aid you in deciding what and where to invest in. That's all right, but it will not bring you eternal life. Only Christ brings eternal life. And you cannot learn him except you accept his yoke. Or is a teacher cow? You are the student cow. We call it discipleship. Discipling men, making men Christ students. Jesus said it is enough for a disciple to be like his master. And actually, that is the counsel of God. That you be conformed, that I be conformed to the image of his son. That was an age-long project. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. God has not dropped that. Now he has set his son as a model, as a prototype, as an example, as a template. Each one of us must fall in line. Except you have the yoke, you cannot follow. This following is not just walking behind. It's about, yes, walking behind him and walking beside him at the same time. I like to ask him, when will you take up the cross? When will you begin your learning? You can learn about Jesus without the cross, but you cannot learn Jesus without the cross. We would like to bow our heads as we pray together. Why don't you ask that the Lord will bring his yoke upon you, that you have come to accept that yoke now. You really, really want to learn Christ, not just learning about Christ. A lot of people have been to Bible colleges and seminaries and they are not looking like Jesus. That student cow cannot just stand by and watch the teacher cow plow and will ever learn how to plow. All the instructions that the teacher cow wants to pass across to the student cow flows through the horizontal wood into the life of that cow without making any single comment. The student cow becomes exactly like his teacher. We would like to bring this prayer point to close as I pray with you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for bringing your word to us again. I request that you will please arise at this point as your people calls for the yoke of Jesus to come to sit on their necks so that they can properly learn Christ. That will make them to become like Christ. Lord, respond to their cries today and let this yoke sit comfortably on our necks. And as we take up this yoke, may we be transformed into Christ's image from one degree of glory to another. Thank you, Father, for we have prayed with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Wow. 
I know God has spoken to you today. Until I see you next time, God bless you. introduce this great book unto you one more time single without sin is a must read it's about rediscovering the truth concerning marriage it's not just for the singles it's for the married do you know the purpose of marriage you will find it well laid out here according to the word of god why God created marriage. It will amaze you that marriage is what God created for you to be what God ordained you to be. All the animals, including human beings that came into the ark of war, came in in twos and God said to keep them alive. So marriage keeps a man alive and especially when it's a godly one. You see a lot of things that will be of help to you. I know you have read many books on marriage. You need to read this one. It will charge your heart. It will change your lifestyle. Thank you. This program was brought to you by Potter's House Christian Mission, Betfaj, Alaza Village, of Ijebu Ode Ibadan Road, Adebayo Ijeayure, Ibadan, Nigeria. We believe that the Lord has richly blessed and challenged your heart by today's telecast. For further inquiries, prayers, and counseling, please contact us on... Yeah.